Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, first of all, let me thank honorable members for their support to the estimates. And let me thank them for their support during the last fiscal year. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, I will break tradition and I will speak about my constituency. <laughs> because, Mr. Speaker, they seem to have forgotten that the Prime Minister has a constituency. So, whereas, whereas I may not be able to speak about the CDP, <laughs> like some of my, my friends and colleagues were able to, Mr. Speaker, I'll, I will just say, Mr. Speaker, that the constituency of Kashmir East, next year, the coming year, we intend to do a few things that will enhance the infrastructure of the constituency. Mr. So Speaker, we, we are going to build a community center for Castries North and Castries East. <coughs> and it's going to be situated at the top of Bocage. And Mr. Speaker, that's the difference in the politics as it exists at that time and how it is now. The member for, for Castries North was, I don't think he was a prime minister. Probably he was, yes, he was a prime minister. And I said to him, because before the constituencies were cut, Agard land was in my constituency, in Castries East. When the boundaries were realigned, Agard land went to Castries North. But, you know, I normally got many votes in Agard land. Um, it was because I remember we built a road in Agard land. It was mud. The land was, it, it belonged to, I forgot the guy's name, and we acquired it. We acquired it between 97 and, and huh? Agard, Mr. Agard. We acquired it and we built a road going down. And these people were, and you know, when in politics, Mr. Speaker, and the member of a cash service, right? I do things to people. People come back and they tell you. And people used to tell us how there was mud. They could not get to their homes because there was mud. If they, if they bought a car, they had to check the rain because they couldn't drive it down. And we built that road and we acquired the land and sold it to, to the people. So in Agard land, I got quite a few votes. So when the bondages were changed, I said to the member for Cashews North, and even we are in opposite sides. Now listen to me, these people need a, they need a community centre. Because Bocage, there, there was no community centre in Bocage, and Bocage again is a place where I got many votes, and I would thank them, I still get many votes there. Um, so we, we had a discussion, and we identified a piece of land at the top of Bocage adjoining Bocage, going into Mondidon, and going on to Egad land. And we acquired it. We acquired it. And it stayed there as usual. I mean, in the, the construct he was in before, I'm sure, once they, once they had an inclination it would help Cashes East, they wouldn't do it. <laughs> so they did not do it. But so we, we put a chain across, and then we got back in government, and again, priorities, we decided let the, let the economy get a little stronger. Let it, let's see what we can do. And this year, we have the funds, we've got the designs, and we're going to start the community center for the people of Bocage and Egad land this financial year. In, in Bocage, Mr. Speaker, we are going to construct a children's park just opposite the Bocard School. We're going to construct in a children's park for the young people, for the children of Bocard, for them to be able to recreate. Right across there, we've got the designs, we're going to start it. We've put lights on the Bocard court, but I want to warn this vandalism that's taking place. And I make no bones about it. This vandalism must stop. You cannot afford to be building 
infrastructure and public facilities and people just damage it. It is because this is something that I, I will, I'm very firm. This vandalism must stop, Mr. Speaker. So we are going to, we've done the Bocas Court twice. We are going to do it again, Mr. Speaker. So in that area, you have the Bocas Court and you'll have the playing facilities, the playground for, for the children. We've done that road, Mr. Speaker, the road going across between Mondidon and Bocage. And then we are, we've, we d I understand the means of sports. We did the Bocage playing field where we have, we resurface it, we put lights in it, and then we built a wall across because the guys, as their skills increase, they kick the ball so hard, they used to, <laughs> they used to break the, 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 the window panes of the neighbor. And as you know, that's the difference. Eh? That guy who lives there, the man is nothing near a Leopard supporter. Nothing near. Nothing near a Leopard supporter. But you know, that used to affect him. He, he came and he said to me, I do not support you, but my window panes get broken all the time. I need you to assist me in that. I said, no problem. And he is a contractor himself. I said, no problem. You go ahead and do it. You understand? And that guy does not support me. But you know, it is not because he does not support you. You must let him suffer. And that's the doctrine that... So, that's who we, we did some drains, we put some lights, so that and the Minister of Sports assisted, and my CDP did the rest. Coming down, Mr. Speaker, um, in the, coming down from, from Bocage, we need to do a few side roads. And as we speak, a road is being done right now in in the Bocash area. And, this is, and, not, and that's not from the year of infrastructure. It's being done as we speak, Mr. Speaker. As we speak, yes. As we speak. And the residents are very happy because the, the, the folks could not get to their homes, Mr. Speaker. They could not get to their homes. But you know, I spoke to them, I've been speaking with them, Mr. Speaker, and as we speak, the road is being done, Mr. Speaker, as you speak. As we speak, Mr. Speaker, so these residents, these residents are very, very happy, Mr. Speaker, very happy, very happy, that's happening now. Now, Mr. Speaker, um, Cassius is a very strange, very strange constituency. There are areas in the constituency like Anchipo and these areas where what you need to do is maintenance. You need to fix the roads, you need to keep the place clean, you need to do the street lighting. So we see about some of the roads are, are very bad. Garden, Garden Grove Road, O'Reilly Crescent, these roads are bad, Mr. Speaker. We need some potholing in there. The Minister of, I think we're starting do some portal in there. But this is Anchipo. You need to you need to do the lights and do the, the portal in the we, we are doing that. Then you go into um Bagatel, Mr. Speaker. And Bagatel is a what they call a wet kobo. I have a special appreciation for these people there, Mr. Speaker. Because these people there are I heard a member for FIFA South, you cannot bribe them. And they tried to bribe them. The last time there was a, a grand, a big entourage that went into Bagatel. A big entourage with the speaker. They went into Bagatel and then they left, they left Bagatel in a hurry, very safely. <laughs> but they left in a hurry with the speaker. But Mr. Speaker, so we have a land problem in Bagatelle, and I want my the Minister of Lands to assist me. We need to acquire these lands for the people to be able to buy the land their houses on. We need some land 
rationalization in that area. Of this area. It's a lot of problems, a lot of trouble. The guy who owns the land, the guy called Mr. Dibik, he's dead already. Dibik, he's dead already. Um, but we need to do, we need to acquire these lands. I promise them, the people of, of Bagatelle, that we started it, but when you lost the last election, they stopped it. Surveys had already started, Mr. Sutiga, in that Bagatelle area. Surveys had already started. Mrs. Mrs. Shirley Lewis was the solicitor. A fellow called Wendell Phillips was the surveyor. The surveys had started. People had put deposits on the land, Mr. Speaker. You know, because it was not in my constituency, they stopped it. Mr. Speaker, when you see this self-righteousness is displayed in this honorable house, we, we who feel it, we felt it, Mr. Speaker, surveys had started. They stopped it. So right now, I think we have to pay back people's their deposits. I mean, it's a whole set of confusion, Mr. Speaker. But in the meantime, we are improving the infrastructure in, in that area. In the we are going to put a few bus shelters, two bus shelters in there. But the main thing is we need to acquire the land for the people of Bagatelle, Mr. Speaker. So the infrastructure work is going. We don't need roads. We, we don't have space for big roads and like Marigo and, and, and them places. Venus. Huh? And Venus and things like that. <coughs> what we need to do, we just have, we just get the, have the people to be comfortable and we are doing that, Mr. Speaker. Coming down, Mr. Speaker, just across the road. Mr. Speaker, you know, these stories of victimization are so vivid in my mind that sometimes I have to refrain myself from when I, I see and I hear these self-righteous claims, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you know, the World Bank, there was a slope stabilization program, Mr. Speaker. And part of that was to fix the walls on the Marsha, George Boulevard, Torchas Boulevard River. Because when the rain fell, the whole place got flooded. We started, we did the George Charles Boulevard side because that, that, that was the side where it got flooded a lot of times. So when, when people don't know, so when I hear them talk and they try to send all kind of people to run against me, and they try to have the same old refrain, what Pierre de Formasha, I just, I just laugh at them, you know, because he who feels it most knows it. They have no idea, because what they thought Marsha was good for was for, for demonstrations. <coughs> So, Mr. Speaker, we, done, we've, we did the, the wars in the George Charles Boulevard side, and we're going into Rich Antipo. We started the wars at the top of Antipo, coming across O'Reilly Crescent. And these houses there, Mr. Speaker, they are very huge houses. They were in a precarious position. And I remember one particular house where the people in, this, in that house they cannot be more UWP than UWP. But the house was in danger, so we built a wall for them first. Because their house was the one in the, in the most... In fact, the lady left, she was so afraid, she left the house because she was free, afraid that when the rain fell, the house would come down. But we built the wall for her and we continued. You understand? And these are things that I can prove it. We built a wall for her, Mr. Speaker, and it came down. Then, you know, when we lost the election in 2016, the, the gentleman who was minister at the time, he actually wrote a letter to tell the World Bank to stop the construction of the walls in Marsha and take it to South East Castries. The World Bank, Mr. Speaker, they don't normally do that. And I'll talk about the World Bank in a while. Because, Mr. Speaker, I'm going, to give, I'm going to give some horrible news. How there are people in this country who are really trying to damage this country because they're not, they're not in power, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we, they wrote a letter instructing the World Bank to stop the, the wars by the Marshall School in the Entrepot Junction and take it to South East Castries. 
and all the time. And the sad thing is that some of the people who will get affected the most are supporters of the United Locust Party. That's the sad thing about this video. That's the sad thing. You understand? So we came back. Again, we had to wait under the DVRP program. And as we speak, these walls have been constructed. So we are going to save these houses. And there is a particular young man with a business in that area, a, a, a car wash business. We're going to save his business. And then we're going to continue these walls, Mr. Speaker. We are working with the church to repair the, the, the community center. And then we are hoping that that community center, which actually is a hurricane shelter, can be fixed. As we speak, we are working on the Mindu Phillip Park. We've done three stands. We've done three stands. And we're working now on the Players Pavilion, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I want to just, I'll come back to that. What, has, what the dangerous maneuver that has taken place as far as that loan from the NLE to improve the sporting facilities in this country. I'll come back to that, Mr. Speaker. We've done the free stands, and Mindo Philip Park is a historic park. It's an historic park. It's the birthplace, not only where he, he was born in, in the area, but where he played his cricket and his football, a, a sporting legend by the name of Mindo Philip. <coughs> so we are going to redo the lights, and we're going to do them some drainage because it's going to be a practice ground for World Cup. World Cup, going to be a practice ground. So we are doing we're doing that park, Mr. Speaker. And I want to tell people that there will be jazz. Jazz will open in Marsha. Well, you know, they are so quick to create this to create this order and say, "Chine, oh, the member for Kashi South, I see they love jazz." And he instructed there, there will be no jazz. So big story. No jazz in Marsha. P and Hale fighting. No jazz in Marsha. So, Mr. Speaker, but you know, what these guys don't understand, when you are in politics to do things for people, you don't get involved in petty squabbles of personalities. You don't. Your motive and your aim must be to help the people of your constituency and the people of the country so you have you can have different ways in which you can solve problems your resolve to do things can be different but once all the men and women have the same objective when you're not in this business because you hate somebody or you're not in this business because you feel you're entitled or you're not in this business because you feel you are the you have for some divine right you must be in government you're different so let me assure them that contrary, contrary to what they were thinking contrary to what they thought would happen jazz is going to open in marsha on what day minister on april on april the 14th jazz april the 30th jazz is going to open in marsha for the people of Castries and the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. So, but next door, we have the Marsha Grounds, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> and Marsha Grounds, I have mixed feelings about it. Because we spent a million dollars in Marsha Grounds. One million dollars. We refenced it. We put in, we, we resurfaced the entire Marsha Grounds. We did underground drainage. We had a good visit. The member of Veniva said he spoke about that, 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 that visit a long time ago. Um, you always exchange the, these notes, Mr. Speaker. We did the entire grounds. We put change room facilities. We put bathrooms, Mr. Speaker. At the time, the member for Castry Central was Minister of Community Development. Again, that, that, that was a different time. He built the community center in that area. He, he repaired the community center and, and he invited me. He invited me. I didn't go, but he invited me. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, Mr. Speaker, that was a different time. The, the, that, that, that animosity and that hatred did not exist, Mr. Speaker. That was a different time. But anyhow, so, but that, the martial grounds would, would vandalize and destroy 
Mr. Speaker, and that really hurts me. So we're going, we're having another try. Another try. We did not do the pavilion, but you're going to be doing the pavilion now. And we're going to be doing some more work in the grounds and fix the fencing, Mr. Speaker. And I must say thanks to the Minister of the Minister of Tourism, the Diamond Steel Orchestra will return to Marshall this year. Because the thrust for culture, the first to get our young people involved in music, Mr. Speaker, we're going to be bringing that back. So we're going to be building a shed next to the James Belgrave Court. Again, the James Belgrave Court was redone completely. It was refenced. We put changing rooms. We put seating. They vandalized it. They vandalized it, Mr. Speaker. And what, I tell you something, some of this vandalism, some of it, some of it, because the lady quote me wrong, is politically motivated. Some of it. Some of it politically motivated. Some of it is politically motivated. But so we're going to be building the courts. We're going to be building the, the, the band room for the steel band. And we're going to be repairing the Belgium Briar Grave Court again. Again, Mr. Speaker. So that whole facility, Marshall Grounds and Mindafield Park, is going, is going to be redone. The Marshall Road, and I heard somebody say, I did it last year because of jazz. The same person who said so was the same person who stopped it. Because it was there together with Marigo and Basel Joseph. They stopped it because it was, it, was in, it was in my constituency. They stopped it. They stopped it. And, the, and the, these self-righteous claims. Is, they stopped it, Mr. Speaker. The Marshall Road is done. We need to do the sidewalks. Chinese side Mr. Speaker. And going to Marshall, Bagatelle, Mr. Speaker. The Bagatelle Road has become a very important thoroughfare to beat the traffic, Mr. Speaker. But the road is too small. It's too narrow. And once there are cars parked on the side, it's difficult, Mr. Speaker. So we're going to be slabbing the, the, slabbing the, the drains so you can have cars going up and down in an easier way, Mr. Speaker. And that book is going to start anytime. This year, thanks to the minister, the member for, for Cashews North, Mr. Speaker. So that is the road network. The other roads, he has some issues in Pavi, but we have we, 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 we resolve them, Mr. Speaker. And the other issues are issues of drainage, and which we are solving <coughs> a little by, by little, Mr. Speaker. The house repair program, we're not building houses, but we are repairing houses. <coughs> so as I may not be able to show pictures of houses, because I don't have the I don't have the resources for that. <laughs> My allocation is too small. <coughs> so what I do, Mr. Speaker, is I, I, I repair houses, I help repair houses, Mr. Speaker. I give the, the materials. And Mr. Speaker, these little things, Mr. Speaker, these little things, Mr. Speaker, the 10 sheets of plywood, the 10 sheets of galvanized, Mr. Speaker, these things change people's lives. You understand? When you tell them that, they don't understand it. They don't understand what it means to change somebody's life. They don't understand what it is to be an instrument, to see a child. When you pay for safety fees, Mr. Speaker, the number of parents who said to me, I had names and things that all, for everybody, you know. We don't pay for safety fees for once in the children, you know. Everybody, everybody, Mr. Speaker. So I don't come here and talk, and talk about what I do for my constituency. I don't, I don't win my constituency. I win it because the people love me, and I win it because the people and I, we work together, Mr. Speaker. We work together, you understand? And I don't come and I, I don't boast and say, but the challenge is, as I was telling Mr. Speaker, come in the East and beat me. That's the challenge. So every year is the same thing. Every year is the same refrain. Now I understand they are debating between customs officers and for those who carry luggage on the airport <coughs> and all kind of different kind of people. Celebrity yeah. <laughs> all can be. So, Mr. Speaker, but I want to thank the people of I want to thank my constituency group. This year, we're going to be 
doing the things I said and some more. But but these people, Mr. Speaker, these people are stoic. These people are loyal, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> these people are people. Their resolve is strong. So no matter what they try, no matter what they try, Mr. Speaker, these people understand. They understand the relationship between the parliamentary rep and my and and them, Mr. Speaker. And I want to tell them. I know they're not. They're not seeing me as they want to see me. This, their complaints, and some of them start, some of the people, Mr. Speaker, some of my adversaries start already. So, Pierre, Pierre, you Pierre, you know? You Pierre, Pierre. But I always tell them, Mr. Speaker, what do you prefer? Do you prefer to have your parliamentary rep as a prime minister or your parliamentary rep as someone that will be told you just start to cry and now you're crying? Which one do you prefer? I sat right there and I was told from right here. Here, yes. No, you weren't there, not you. Yeah. It was there or there. Yeah, yeah, there. There, yeah, by him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him, are you sitting? He's here. Yeah. I was told, I was complaining. I was still, that you crying for? That you're crying for, you just start to cry. These words will remain in my head forever, Mr. Speaker. So I tell my, my constituents, do you want to go back to that era, Mr. Speaker? And they understand. So, Mr. Speaker, I know that I, they are, some people are complaining about not seeing me. I want to tell them, I am there with you. I have people on the ground to see what you need, Mr. Speaker. And within my capabilities and within the resources of the state, I will assist and give what I want. But before I go, Mr. Speaker, before I move into, there's another project which I kept very close to my heart. But since all my colleagues have projects, I, I, have, to, I have to say something, because if not, Mr. Speaker, you know a place called Kalalu? A fellow used to sell hard-boiled eggs there. Kalalu is the man. <clears throat> There's a big wooden structure there, Mr. Speaker. And that wooden structure is really, it doesn't augur well for the entrance to the capital of Castries. <clears throat> so we've, we've acquired it, Mr. Speaker. And next week, God willing, we are going to begin to demolish that structure. <clears throat> demolish that structure in the speaker and we are going to have a grand entrance into Marshall. We have we'll have the roundabout and we're going to do something in that area so Marshall can look like the constituency. Yes. <laughs> so that's going to happen Mr. Speaker. That's going to happen um, we're going to start next week of the Minister of Physical Development and Shores. It happens next week for me so we can start and then i will go back to the people to tell them how we're going to redevelop that whole place with the speaker because the children's park is there already so we develop that whole so the whole entrance to marshall will be changed with the speaker so Mr. Speaker, i just thought i would give you a quick glimpse of what's happening in my constituency and i want to thank my colleagues because they understand that the the, the prime minister's constituency is normally um left behind but we will, we will try, and I must say, they, they understand that, Mr. Speaker, and they assist in getting things done for my constituency. Because a lot of people believe when the Prime Minister own the Treasury, and they can just say, do this, do that, do this. One day a guy came to me, he said to me, I said, boss, I can't see you. He said, boss, you can't do that. He said, boss, you are the Prime Minister, you know. And he stressed on the word prime, you understand? So, so he thinks that because I'm prime minister, I can just go to the treasury and take the money and do whatever I want. I can't. And I always tell them I can't, Mr. Speaker. I can't. Mr. Speaker, we, can we just speak a little, Mr. Speaker, on, the, on what's happening in... We spoke about the constituents, Mr. Speaker. I want to just say a little bit on what the member from Miku South said. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, as a member from Kashi South, the member from Miku South, 
I expected a former Minister of Finance to come to this honorable house after he, he wants to see when to speak and all kinds of things about who speaks first and who speaks last, Mr. Speaker. I thought the member would come with some substance. He would come and give a critical analysis of what happened, what happened in the estimates, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> but Mr. Speaker, the member for Miku South, his delivery, his content was lacking substance. It was, it sounded like, like a guy who is really suffering from what they call chagrin pouvoir. It was filled with bitterness, personal attacks on people, it was filled with innuen innuendo and filled with misinformation and untruths, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, something happened. A letter was written to, the, to me and copied to the World Bank and the IMF. Copied to the World Bank and the IMF. And that letter was constructed in a way to cause the IMF and the World Bank that we've worked very well with, that we've respected and have respected us, to look at us in a different light, Mr. Speaker, with a view to causing the people of St. Lucia to suffer. With a view of people of St. Lucia suffering because the opposition believes that because they are not in power, the people must suffer, Mr. Speaker. So you write a letter copied to the World Bank, the IMF, the Chamber of Commerce, the directors of the bank. A letter that is, the contents are untrue, Mr. Speaker. The contents seek to put the whole finances of a country in a bad light, Mr. Speaker after you've heard a budget that for the first a budget for the first time since 2016 and, and the records will show you we are experiencing three years of surpluses and you, you, you write the World Bank and the IMF to try to turn that around put us in a bad light Mr. Speaker why is that letter? That letter was written because we went to the bank to borrow money for sports facilities and youth, infra youth infrastructure, youth sport infrastructure, Mr. Speaker, and to, for solution to be able to host the ICC World Cricket Cup. $80 million, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there are islands around us. With higher debt to GDP ratio than us, that have borrowed in excess of $300 million for World Cup cricket, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> but I tasked him, and I know he was vexed with me, to cut the budget to bare bones. And we also task him not only to spend the money for World Cup cricket, but to spend it in different facilities in the country to make it stretch. And what did he do? And is the lies in that letter. He, the Minister for Sports, appointed a qualified contractor, one of the most academically qualified contractors in the country, a young contractor. But you know, because he's a solution consultant, you must denigrate him, a young contractor. He went to the facilities and he prepared a proper costing of the work that has to be done in these facilities, Mr. Speaker. A certified contractor. And these costings, Mr. Speaker, were taken and looked over by the Ministry of Sports to ensure that they were okay, Mr. Speaker. And in that letter, the leader of the opposition says that work started on the, on the, on, we drew, we did work without, <laughs> Before we started, before we started to withdraw on the load, here's what he said. He said that we are already doing work on that load, Mr. Speaker. That is not true. That is not true. The work that's being done now is a, is an advance that was taken not from the loan, 
One from the Lord, Mr. Speaker, to do some work, to start the work. Because if we didn't start, time would be of the essence, and there's a time limit for the World, the world Cup cricket, Mr. Speaker. And he writes that letter, and he says there is no accountability, and he wants to see audited statements. National Lottery gives audited statements every year. You know, Mr. Speaker, but that's the same gentleman who is speaking about, and he said, He's never given a direct award for he was no international airport, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, I kept away from that, and he threatens me all the time. I heard him threaten the member of cash yourself. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker, February 20th, 2019. And I'll make it a document of the House, Mr. Speaker, because we'll see. I want to read for you, Mr. Speaker. Purpose. <coughs> To finance the United Airport Development Project, amount US dollars 100 million. US dollars 100 million. Repayment 20 years. Listen up carefully. Other particulars alone contained in the proposal and the proposed rule agreement are subject to negotiation between Slasper and the Exim Bank, except that the government of St. Lucia will approve the specific terms of the proposed government of St. Lucia guarantee. Guarantee. The same guarantee is complained about. Guarantee. And Section 28 of the Act will apply such guarantee. Finally, I wish to confirm to you officially and in writing that the government of St. Lucia has identified Overseas Engineering and Construction Company as its preferred contractor for the project. That is a gentleman who says he never told anybody who to get a contract to build airport. The speaker, I'll do a document now. Mr. Speaker, that, and you heard today that it was <laughs> all the projects for the airport were tendered. You heard that today, didn't you hear it today? Yeah. That the, the tender, ever, the, the standard, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, that is the kind of things that we have to subject ourselves to, Mr. Speaker. Now, Mr. Speaker, let me just explain again the concept of surpluses again, Mr. Speaker. Let me do it in layman terms. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, think about a the family. They have income. From their income, they buy their food, they pay their electricity, Mr. Speaker, they send their children to school, they haven't got to pay for CD fees again. <clears throat> They have, they buy their school uniform, etc. Mr. Speaker, that, 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 that's the family, okay? But they want to buy a house or even a car. But the money they get, after they've done these expenses, they cannot pay the loan for the car. <clears throat> so they have enough money to feed themselves, but they cannot pay their car loan. So they have a deficit. So they have to borrow money to pay their car loan. That is the state of the country that the member for Miku South left us. We had to borrow money to pay our loans. That is the economy managed, you know. That is called a primary deficit. In fact, he, would, he, he even had a, a primary a current deficit in that he spent more for basic things than he got income. And the member for Kajita was clean, was clear. We, and he says it's because of taxation. Mr. Speaker, <coughs> listen to the two elements of taxation, he says, that was caused us to increase our income, Mr. Speaker. Listen to the logic. Let us agree with him and say that, let's, let's agree and say, the petroleum tax is what increased our revenue and causes us to have a surplus. But Mr. Speaker, 
If there was no buoyancy in the economy, people wouldn't buy gas. If there was no how do you buy gas? If there was no buoyancy in the economy, if one point wasn't down, and if more people weren't working, and if more minibuses weren't running, how would people buy gas? How would the government get a tax from it, Mr. Speaker? Then he says, it's because of the cost of cooking gas. We put tax on cooking gas, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> I mean, this must be something wrong, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we subsidize cooking gas for the public of St. Lucia, the 20 pound and 22 pound cylinders, an average of between 16 and 22 dollars per cylinder of gas. And the most during the member for Mucosov time was eight or nine dollars. And he, and he stands and he says that because of taxes on gas, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we're not going into that conversation about flour again. We've, the minister has been said, has said several times we subsidize flour, Mr. Speaker. But figures do not lie. Figures never lie, Mr. Speaker. The increase in revenue in, in, in the country is due to two things. One, because of the increase in economic activity that's been generated because the economy is growing. And secondly, a bit of inflation that's caused the price of things to work. But Mr. Speaker, you can feel the buoyancy in the economy. You can feel it. You can feel it in the country, Mr. Speaker. When so many people want to be vendors, when so many people want to sell things by, by the roadside, it's because there are people, there, are, there is money, and people are buying things. Mr. Speaker, when you have an economy where you've given about more than 200 people grants, young people, to go into their businesses, Mr. Speaker, and these businesses are surviving because they're buoyancy in the economy. The MSME program, Mr. Speaker, the community, the community tourism program. But the, so, Mr. Speaker, it is clear in the figures. The economy is growing, Mr. Speaker. There is more revenue, and the figures do not lie, Mr. Speaker. The surpluses we are showing here are surpluses that show that the economy is growing. And if, and if things continue, without downside risks, there are downside risks. There's climate change, there's increase in the price of, of fuel, there are wars, etc. If the down if the, the downside risks do not materialize themselves, Mr. Speaker, this economy is going to grow and it's going to grow further, it's going to grow bigger in 2024 and beyond, Mr. Speaker. But we've been truthful. We've said that there's an overall deficit. We've admitted that. We said that whereas there's a primary surplus where we can pay part of our loans from our income, overall, we have to borrow to continue the work of the country, Mr. Speaker. And that is why there's an overall deficit. And we are working assiduously to get that deficit down, Mr. Speaker, so we can have a surplus in our overall surplus in our economy, Mr. Speaker. And I predict that all things being equal, all things being equal, Mr. Speaker, we, our aim, our aim, is to have an overall surplus in the next four years. <coughs> when the Labour Party is in power. <coughs> in the next four years, Mr. Speaker, I am predicting that we're going to have an overall surplus. And that's our aim, Mr. Speaker. And the policy will show, Mr. Speaker, the last time unemployment was where it is now is when the member for Vuford saw as Prime Minister. It's the next time, Mr. Speaker. And you will hear them, you will hear them begin to doubt the unemployment figures, Mr. Speaker. You hear them. All the signs of the economy, the economy is growing, Mr. Speaker. Now, so he says many things that, as usually, as usual, misinformation. He says that the Minister for Infrastructure, which we downgraded his budget because we have no confidence. Minister for Finance, you have 15 minutes left. Yeah. We downgraded his budget, Mr. Speaker, because we have, we have no confidence in him. I stood here and I said the reason why the budget is less because we paid the DFCs for this year. We paid it last year. And I'm pleased to tell you, Mr. Speaker, that as we speak, we've paid today, we paid $46 million in DFC payments from cash. 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 And 
according to my, my friend, so hot. <laughs> they said it came from the, the what? It came from the black box. What? The lock box. The lock box. Yes, you know where it came from, Mr. Speaker? It came from prudent financial management and also came from not taking loan proceeds and squander it, Mr. Speaker. So, and next year, this financial year, we are going to be doing a novel thing, Mr. Speaker. We are going to be starting a sovereign wealth fund for the young people of St. Lucia. That's where we go, but that, that is for the policy, Mr. Speaker. So here he goes. He says there was a decrease in national insecurity, Mr. Speaker. Again, again, Mr. Speaker. If you remove national security from home affairs, there must be education home affairs. Exactly. Must be education home affairs. But let's look at what we did. Bordelais, due to the fact that this Minister of Finance doesn't allow people to just tell him things, we found that locally we could do the fencing at Bordelais at about less than a third the cost if we had imported it. So we did the work at Bordelais. The fencing work, which is going on, Mr. Speaker, and it's going to cost about a third of what it would have cost if we had imported, if we had done go as we and go foreigner to do it. A local firm did it, Mr. Speaker. So we have saved that kind of money. So that's where the saving is, Mr. Speaker. That's where, where the saving is. He says that what we did, we did not pad the budget. What did, we didn't pad the budget. We said that if we have a project cost, eight million dollars and we're only going to spend three million dollars this year that's all we're going to put in the budget what we're going to spend this year that's what that's the Mr. Speaker, because the budget is real we must live the budget you must be able to feel the budget mr speaker then he then he speaks about and then he goes and he attacks civil servants but that's his habit he attacks civil servants. what are you attacks civil servants for for what's written what's written here mr speaker mr speaker an economy is alive. An economy, you feel an economy, Mr. Speaker. An, an economy is not what you write. An economy is what you feel. <clears throat> you know, figures demonstrate what you feel, not writings. And go and tell the, 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 the mothers who are getting their maternal care free that the economy is not working for them. Go and tell the semi and Mr. Speaker, we must give a special recognition for the Minister of Sports for the semi professional football league. Go and tell. And I see a, 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 a footballer inside of here. Go and tell him when he used to play football and break his leg on the field for nothing. Tell him if he will get some money now to play football, how where he, he might have been. And so you go and tell these people that the economy is not working. The economy is working, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, about healthcare. Do you know, Mr. Speaker, that healthcare in St. Lucia is almost free? <clears throat> it's a serious thing. Healthcare in St. Lucia is almost free. Because, and that is why some of, if you look at the statement, you see some of our receipts from, from other receipts are low. Because people are not paying for healthcare. And they are getting healthcare, Mr. Speaker. So these are the things. That is how you measure an, econ an economy, Mr. Speaker. Then he says that equity is done. Equity is done, Mr. Speaker. Equity is done for a, simple, for a very simple reason. The BNTF program was $12 million for the entire program. This year, we're only going to spend... Remember, you have 10 minutes left. This year, we're only going to spend $4 million, Mr. Speaker. So we, that's what we'll be putting $4 million, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, so what I want to say, Mr. Speaker, is that many of the accusations, many of the things that were cited in the budget by the member from, from Microsoft, isn't it correct, Mr. Speaker? He says that the rental from office went up. Rental of office. <laughs> This bigger rental from us went up because of Orange Grove. And Mr. Speaker, we've tried our best to stay away from these things. 
we try our best when he speaks about extravagance and we tried our best to stay away from it. I have tried my best to stay away from these things. But he continuously opens the door for these things, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to tell you, Mr. Speaker, that the civil servants in the Ministry of Finance and generally, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the civil servants, they work with us as a team, Mr. Speaker. The member from Microsoft talks about COVID. You, the, the way he speaks, COVID only affected St. Lucia. COVID affected the whole world. And when we were in opposition, we supported some of the COVID, some of the COVID things. We supported it, Mr. Speaker. But the question is, look at the economy before COVID. And the member for Cashew St. John was right. Look at the economy before COVID and look at it after COVID. So because of COVID, Mr. Speaker, we experience a 26% drop, the sixth highest drop in the world. And his excuse is because we are a tourism dependent economy. What about Antigua? What about Antigua? Antigua is smaller. Antigua is a more tourism dependent economy than us. What about Barbados? But we had the biggest job because the economy was badly managed and the wastage between 2017 and 2019, Mr. Speaker. That was why we, we experienced such a, a job, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in the policy statement, we're going to talk about St. Jude. And again, personal attacks, attacking, attacking people, personal attacks, Mr. Speaker. Because when you have no facts, you have to get personal. When you have no ideas, you have to give me pre. When you can do different, you have to castigate Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I think this budget, these estimates, Mr. Speaker, they lay the groundwork for the policy statement. And, Mr. Mr. Speaker, in the policy statement, there are many exciting things to look for. I had 30, 30 infrastructure programs, Mr. Speaker, and I did not put all. I didn't even mention tourism, Mr. Speaker. I believe, Mr. Speaker. I believe, Mr. Speaker, we, in the policy statement, I think we can add, we'll be able to outline at least 50 projects, at least 50 projects that will start in this financial year. And you're going to hear the, the largest private sector investment in tourism and in housing for a long time, Mr. Speaker. The last time so many hotels will be starting in Lucia was when we were in government with the member for V4 for South, Mr. Speaker. And I want to say to you, Mr. Speaker, that I want to tell the member for V4 for Castries North, Mr. Speaker, that these personal attacks, Mr. Speaker, we don't need we don't need to defend you because you know we understand that it's our grips, Mr. Speaker. We know is sour grapes. I want to say that we are very comfortable with the member for Castries North in our team. He's a team player. We are very comfortable with this leader. And I want to say to him, Mr. Speaker, that we are ready and willing to work with him. Blue wave, red wave, whatever wave. Once our objectives are the same. Once we intend to serve people, once we have no egos, no, once we have no self-entitlement, we are going to work with him, Mr. Speaker. We work with him, Mr. Speaker, the member for Central Castries, the member for Castries North, Mr. Speaker. We welcome them in the cabinet. And together, Mr. Speaker, together, Together, this country will, will Remember, you have five minutes left. continue to soar to the heights that we wanted to soar for the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to note that every member who had one hour. And, 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 and because you know that's going to be, including, <laughs> including me, Mr. Speaker. And my, my opening statement was about one hour and five minutes. So when you will hear the propaganda that we stop the fur from we stop the from Microsoft for speaking, Mr. Speaker, I want the press to note that everybody had an hour, in, including 
the prime minister and the leader of government business one hour and my presentation where I lady estimates was one hour also so there was no separate treatment this figure because you know there's no entitlement in this in, in in this house you know this house is a house of rules and we follow the standing orders, Mr. Speaker. That's what we'll do. We follow the standing orders. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you. I want to thank the staff of the Ministry of Finance. I want to apologize on their behalf. Tell them the attack on them was not from the government. <clears throat> the attack on the civil servants and the attack on the police was not from not a government attack. I want to disassociate myself. Disassociate myself completely from these attacks on the, on the public servants, Mr. Speaker. I want to tell the public servants, we appreciate them. We know there are signs, there's room for improvement. Everything can improve. There is no perfect anything, Mr. Speaker. But generally, the civil servants, particularly those that I work with, Mr. Speaker, they are very cooperative and we work well together. I take responsibility and I do not play that I know everything. I will never know everything, nor will I sign know everything. No matter how they criticize me, I do not know everything, Mr. Speaker. I want to tell the members of the St. Lucia Police Service, Police Force, Mr. Speaker, that continue, continue. Let's work together. Let's work together, Mr. Speaker. Let's work. Do not get distracted by people who want to destabilize the country. Don't get distracted, Mr. Speaker. In the policy statement, we'll outline the, the, the resources we put in the police force. The resources we put in, Mr. Speaker, as we speak. The casting is going on at the northern headquarters in Grosile. As we speak, as we speak, Mr. Speaker, as we speak, work in the Viewfort Police Headquarters is going to be finished by May this year. The police is going to be in brand new headquarters, Mr. Speaker. As we speak, Mr. Speaker, the movement to the national, national printing has been completed and they are working in new premises now, Mr. Speaker. As we speak, the immigration office, the immigration office has moved. They kept the people in the immigration office for years. So many all kinds of ailments. Just talk, talk, talk. We came in and we moved them, Mr. Speaker. That's how we continue to treat our civil servants and our public servants. Mr. Speaker, I thank you. I thank all the members here. And I want to wish you a very reflective Easter for everyone. Where I hope we can rest and because, Mr. Speaker, the, the sea is getting rough. Mr. Speaker, the sea is getting rough, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you again. I want to thank your staff. I want to start, thank the members of the security services, the members in my detail, Mr. Speaker, and everyone. I want to wish you members of the GIS and the press, Mr. Speaker, a happy, happy Easter, reflective Easter, and all the best to you and your family. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.